Welcome back, fam. Average guy DIY on the track, fam. <laughs> Don't slack, fam. It's time to make a coffee table. Wham, bam. Oh, check out that grain. Yeah, it's looking insane. Uh, and check out this view. I use a Canon camera too. Woo. Uh, and the budget was zero. But I spent 40 bucks to be a hero. Yeah, cause furnish ain't cheap. But it would have been incomplete. Uh, and the bottom piece I found on the dumpster completely for free. Economics, you know how it be. My God keeps blessing me. <laughs> you didn't know your boy had the skills. What is up, guys? All right, so we're building a coffee table that was given to us for a friend. You can see the slab has a huge crack in it, so uh, I guess a company was giving it away for free. Um, we decided that we could make a nice coffee table out of this, and that is what we are working on today. Those two holes you're looking at right now ends up being perfect. We're gonna drill straight through there, and that is how our table will be anchored. This particle wood is extremely soft, so even though I sped the video up, you do wanna be taking your time when you're drilling through this nice and careful. So it turns out there's exactly four holes, which is perfect to mount this wooden slab, and we're gonna use some nice long bolts. It's been a year since I've converted to all wireless tools and I would highly recommend it. It is absolutely incredible. Always make sure to keep your work area nice and tidy. I must say mounting this was quite difficult because of the large crack that was in the wood. It was actually lining up to the bolt holes, but I could definitely make it work. Uh, another thing is it's not perfectly symmetrical, so you kind of had to use your eye to make sure the piece of wood was in the middle of the table. After I drilled the holes, I had to use a trick here to mark the holes from bottom up to the bottom of the slab, and you'll see that in a second. I basically just skinned this pencil and made it extremely thin. So as you can see, I just use the pencil, poke it from the bottom, and mark the uh, hole that we're going to be drilling uh, directly on the slab. Now, obviously, you could have measured to get the hole as well. I just did this because it's faster. Make sure if you are doing a trick like this to move the pencil around as many times as you can in the hole because you don't want the mark so small that you don't see it or you don't know where it is because you're actually marking wood. So it's not super clear sometimes. You can see here how the mark is still slightly faded. So your marking has to be very persistent and clear. And because this slab is not symmetrical, make sure you mark the right and left side and the top and the bottom side to make sure you know exactly where the slab sits on this stand. When drilling these holes, you want to make sure that they're actually slightly bigger than the bolt you're putting through here. Uh, you want them to go in smoothly because we are going to countersink these holes and also they have to go through one of these holes which is in the slab and then into another hole which is in the table. So you have to count for the amount of positioning that's going to be missed. I used to work for a friend that uh, had a construction company and every time I would drill downwards I was always on an angle. Um, it's very easy for your eyes to play tricks on you, especially when you're drilling downward. So you should always make sure that you are directly vertical, straight up and down, so you're, the hole that you're drilling is completely straight. You can see one of the holes uh, lands right in the middle of the crack of this slab, but it's only at the top, like the, the part that you can see there. The rest of it is directly into the wood because the crack is on a huge angle. We are also going to fill all these with wood filler. That's why we countersunk the bolts. Now I just used a little trick here with the zip ties to line up all the holes through the slab and through the stand it's going to be mounted on. This is also a good way to see if the holes are aligned. If there's too much resistance from the zip tie, you know that the bolt is going to be a very tight fit. Also, it's just kind of nice to have them there as you're putting the bolts in place because it kind of keeps the table set in the correct spot so it doesn't do a whole lot of shifting and moving around while you're working. If you're wondering why I'm inside today, it's just because it's getting a little chilly outside now. So I just decided to do this project inside until we have to start painting or varnishing. I can't stress this enough. Whenever you're doing projects like this and you're using like two different types of wood, um, just take your time doing everything because if something chips or it breaks or it splits, um, there's usually no recovery. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. 
you can see here that how the hole lined up was that the top of this would be directly in the split of the wood. But if you look underneath, it's actually missing the, the crack by quite a lot. Four of these bolts are more than strong enough to hold this table in place. And when they're tightened, it will keep everything nice and tight. Honestly, as I'm building this table, I'm like, wow, this is turning out pretty cool. <laughs> Too bad it's not mine. <laughs> it belongs to a friend of a friend of ours uh, that's actually going to be owning it. So uh, I want to make sure to put the extra detail into it to make sure it's uh, quite nice. So this is where the countersink of the uh, bolts there that we drilled the holes for comes in handy because we're going to fill these up with wood filler so that everything is the same level and it's nice and smooth. Doing the same thing over here, we're going to fill in this huge uh, split that's in the wood there so that everything is the same level, it's nice and smooth, but also so that it's cosmetically uh, pleasing to the eye. Now, because we're going to be using a wood varnish, we do know that some of this uh, will come through. So visually, you'll still see all the cracks, you'll still see all the fills, but that's quite all right. Um, if for this type of table, it's going to give it a lot of character, and I think the end result will look really nice. You can see here that if there was no large splits anywhere in the wood that we had to fill, it would be so simple to fill these little bolt holes over and it would look very nice and neat and tidy. Next, we are just applying some varnish to this table. This is the very first coat. In between each coat, I do do a light sanding so that it continues to keep the table nice and smooth. It also al allows for a very nice bond as well with each coat. You can see that even with the varnish being added, you can clearly see the bolt holes with the wood filler that we've done. Uh, and you can actually see them pretty clear. Once we get to about the fourth coat, it will start to look a little better and uh, give it a little bit of character as well. Don't rush this process. Just take your time and spread the varnish nice and even all over the surface area of what you want to be covered there. Here I'm doing the first light sanding. And as you can see, I'm not using any power tools. I'm just doing it by hand so that I can really feel the grain. I can feel where it's high, feel where it's low. I can also feel where it's rough and feel with it where it's smooth. And I know I've already been to that area. After I sand, normally I would just use a little bit of alcohol and wipe away all the dust particles. Um, but I didn't do that this time in this video. The, I only started doing it after the third and fourth coat, uh, but uh, that's normally what I would do the normal process. Here I'm just putting another coating on it and obviously I won't bore you guys. It was four coats. I sanded in between each coat and I'll show you the final result. Now you can really see the nice, clean, shiny look. It looks great. And with the diamond coat, it's actually scratch resistant now, so it should last quite long. Well, YouTube fam, we are coming to the end of this project. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. It was great practice, especially with this type of wood. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click on that bell to stay tuned for my next video. Take care and enjoy your day.